Woodland Scenics has an easy way of adding lighting to your model railroad through the Just Plug Hub. Now this could be very expensive, so if you're budget minded, you may want to build one for yourself. And I'm going to show you how to do it on a breadboard. So let's get started right now. Hi, I'm Tom Kovichak, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing our dream of building a model railroad. There are model railroaders who are not very good at electrical issues, so Woodland Scenics made this just plugs for them. But there are others that are pretty good with electronics and electrical items and want to experiment with things. So I'm going to show you how to do duplicate this right here on here on a breadboard. I'm going to break this up into two videos. I'm going to go over these components on here, the new components that I haven't showed you anything on yet on the first one. And I'll show you a little demonstration of what I did so far on the first video. And then the second video, we'll get into the meat and potatoes of putting this thing together and showing you how to do this and the rectifier this rectifier and the other rectifier that I just got in so make it a little bit easier so you could hook it up to your power pack. Now one thing that you can do with this is the just plug the way they designed it you could use it for AC and DC they make a wall wart for it and you could also hook it up onto the AC of your power pack because they have a little rectifier and capacitor in there and that's what this is right here so we're going to talk about that and then go into the building of this in the second video so if this is your first time here and you would like to see more videos on model railroading and cost effective ways to illuminate your model railroad and animate your model railroad go ahead and hit that subscribe button and while you're at it ding that bell and that'll notify you whenever i have a new video coming out and while you're at it check out my playlists in the playlist page of my channel i have a lot of different playlists in there categorized by subjects so it's easy for you to find there's over 40 some playlists in there right now so go check that out also i have five potentiometers on here and the potentiometer was the most expensive item on here which was 95 cents a piece but they make cheaper ones now i have five lights this one has four this cost you what 18 dollars 19 what does this cost you here well there's a cost savings here and you could add to it keep adding to it and the more you add the less it's going to cost you because the LEDs are very inexpensive. The transistors are very inexpensive. I got a whole box of 200 transistors. Now they're different transistors, but the ones we use, there's 20 of, of the ones in there. And you, we could use some other ones in here also that could do the same thing. The resistors are very inexpensive. Like I said, the most expensive part on here are the potentiometers. Christmas tree lights. Here is a set that we bought uh, after Christmas and paid, I think, about $2 for them at CVS. You get 50 LEDs in here. Now, there are Christmas tree lights where you can get 100 of them that may cost uh, maybe a dollar more, but uh, th this is what we picked up. We got four boxes of it, so that's about 200 LEDs. So that'll last us a long time in our experiments here. But anyway... This is what the circuitry looks like on there, and they use SMDs on there. So it's pretty inexpensive for them to make these. In fact, I priced the uh, little transistors that they have on here, and I could get 100 of them for $2.68. The only thing is that I'd have to wait about three to four weeks to get them because they're on a slow boat from China, just like everything else. They use SMD resistors on here, which are dirt cheap. Yeah, and just like this, the probably the most expensive part on it is the potentiometer. But before I show you how to do this and what is involved in doing this, I'm going to tell you a little bit about, we haven't discussed these yet, transistors, potentiometers, and what I have here are diodes 
and a capacitor. And I, and I got a little switch that I added on, a little push button switch. But we're going to talk about diodes and capacitors. Now the reason I have four diodes on there is because it's a rectifier. But after, you know, th this was another thing that took a while to get here. But this is the same thing. It has four leads on the back of it that I soldered on this board just to, to play around with it. But that is also a rectifier. It changes AC into DC and we'll talk about that. And they add a capacitor to it just to hold the charge. Let's take a look at the components that we haven't seen yet. The diagram you see right now on the left hand side is of a potentiometer and on the right hand side is a visual representation of exactly the same thing. The only thing with the um, one on the left, the wiper where you could see the arrow, that could be moved from one end to the other to change the resistance throughout the entire circuit. Number one and number two are both capacitors, and the ones that we're going to be working with right away is number two, which you can see a plus sign on it. That's because it's an electrolytic capacitor. It stores electricity and has a plus on it. You could only hook it up in one direction. If you try hooking it up in the opposite direction, you'll explode the capacitor. So you have to be careful with those. This is a symbol for a diode similar to the LED except it doesn't emit light. Current flows from the anode to the cathode and blocks current flow in the opposite direction from the cathode to the anode. So this device is used to control which direction the current flows in your circuit. Here we have two transistors. The one on the left, the NPN, is the one that we're going to be using in our projects right now. This device regulates the current flow in our project. It can either be turned off it could be turned on completely or it could regulate the current flow going from the collector to the emitter. We won't get too far into the theory behind it, but we'll just use it in our projects and rely on the magic of the NPN transistor. This last picture here is a rectifier with a RC filter on it. Now the four diodes on there converts the AC signal to DC and with the capacitor and the resistor it smooths out the peaks and valleys of the voltage created by the diodes as you can see in the dotted lines. This may seem a little confusing in the beginning but once you start working on circuits and see how everything works and experiment along with me you'll be able to see how easy this is to understand. I use the LED just to uh, determine that there's power on it because I when I was first testing it out I had these leads on my meter to check the voltage on it. But anyway there it is right there with the rectifier on it coming off of the AC on the power pack. This breadboard right here, this mini breadboard right here, is a rectifier. You can see the four diodes and I have the um, capacitor and actually I have two resistors on there, one for the capacitor and one for the LED. I don't need the LED on there, that's just for indication that there's power on. Now this over here is the rest of the circuit where you have two resistors, a transistor and a potentiometer to light the LEDs and to change the uh, brightness on it. Now I'm using one finger on here so I'm just going to go like this and raise that up all the way up and you can see the difference in the lighting. Now with this right here it's not as bright as it is if I hook it up to the power supply with the 24 volts. Now they have a wall wart that you could use to plug into this that is 24 volt DC. And that's what I simulate on this power supply right here. And I'll, you know, I'll show this right here. And then I'll just switch this over. I'll put the leads on here from the uh, uh, power supply and you can see the difference. You can turn them all the way off.
and then brighten them up with the potentiometer. I hooked up one of the uh, lights, just plug lights. This is a blue one that they have. Let me see if I can find the uh, thing right here. LED stick on lights, blue, 25 milliamps each, ready to plug in. And where's this thing at? 259. I got a, a bunch of them. But anyway, these are the the ones that they use are very very bright. I have this one turned up all the way, and let me turn this one up. So that's Christmas tree light all the way up, and that's the one that you get from Woodland Scenics to just plug lights. Now that's the blue one right there. Let me turn this one down a little bit. I mean they're very bright. I mean they're they're a a six pin. LED and they're on a, a, a real small circuit board but they they get pretty bright as you can see right there and let me put that all the way up that one this one's all the way up and this one right here is all the way up and these I have cut down a little bit I just wanted to show you, uh, I hooked up a, the other output to it, so i got five on there now, and I'll put the uh, power supply on. And I have these down uh, pretty low, so I'm going to increase them. And as I increase them, we'll take a look at the uh, amperage on here. And there's three of them all the way up. There's the fourth one all the way up. And here's the fifth one. So with five five LEDs all the way up, uh, the maximum brightness on it is uh, 0.13 amps. So you could uh, make a lot of these before you get up to one amp. But, uh, I mean, I wouldn't worry about the amperage on this if you're use even if you're using a wall work that's 24 volts like they have for the just plugs you can uh, that one is one amp or if you're using on a power supply and you want to use the uh, minus 12 and the plus 12 on there you can get one amp on there and still have plenty of power left over to for a lot of other lights. Now there is other ways of doing it. We could do the same thing with the Arduino, which is going to be a lot easier, and I'll show you that in one of the episodes that I do for an Arduino, how to change the brightness on there. Next episode, I'll show you how to go from a bare breadboard like this to this right here. We'll go through all the steps of assembling this and we'll also show you how to make the rectifier and I'll do it with the four diodes and I'll do it with the small rectifier right here which makes it a little bit easier all, all it has is four pins on it two for the AC and two for the DC and we'll show you how to do that so you could hook it up to your power pack just like this on the AC accessories we'll see you